And here to discuss more about this argument are Rabbi Yitzhak Murmerstein, Iran Baruch from Bina, the Jewish Movement for Social Change, and via Skype, Father Eamon Kelly from the Magdala Center. Hello, all of you. Hello. Shalom, shalom. So let's, you know, interesting Darwin Day. We, you know, people obviously are here talking about Darwin, but with, within Israel, how does the whole theory of Darwin fit given its, you know, creation versus, you know, evolution? Unfortunately, I think most of the people in Israel don't know that there was Darwin Day. And it's not in the... <laughs> and they don't Darwin. And, and don't, yeah, they Darwin, but they don't know it's Darwin Day. And I think it's uh, uh, Judaism and science go very good together. I don't see a conflict. I think uh, part of having doubt and ask question is what I see is my Jewish faith. Mm -hmm. And I think this evolution idea is a very good idea. And it should be spread not only in science, but uh, in, in other fields too. And I think that in many ways, Judaism is in favor of evolution versus revolution, for example. Mm -hmm. So I see in very favor of the Darwin thinking and the Darwin theory. Of course, there's a lot of question, a lot of holes, but it's something that but is... But it's still a part of history. Yeah, and it's right. very important to learn and to know and to understand it in, in early age and in, as a student too. And for you, Rabbi, I know that you are uh, an expert in Rav Cook, who is a very well-known, uh, you know, Kabbalist uh, before before the Holocaust. What from the, the writings of Rav Cook, you know, did he discuss this, and where did he stand on he, evolution? He discussed it a lot, actually. Um, his whole system it has a few foundations. One of the foundations in it is that we're in a process of hit aluta olam. The whole world is in a process of elevation, and that's one of the foundations of our existence. And so when Darwin was making a, a buzz in the early 1900s. He wrote in his own spiritual writings a piece where he said, this doctrine of evolution that is now gaining acceptance has a greater affinity with the secret teachings of Kabbalah than all other secular sciences. This evolution, which proceeds on a course of improvement, it says that things are, are getting better, is the basis of optimism. And when we see it, we find here that this is a description how the infinite works into action to continue bringing existence to its full potential. And so that of that which they were able to see in a little part, which, you know, through the Darwin, to notice it in a little bit, is actually the whole nature of reality in all existence is going in this process of evolution and elevation. I want to bring in, uh, we'll continue in a minute, I want to bring in, you know, Father Kelly. Uh, thank you for joining us. So, you know, you, you know, you run the Magdala Center up, up in the Galilee, and let's talk. This is, you know, another interesting concept of how, you know, Christianity and, and Darwin go hand in hand or not. Please explain from your perspective. For a Christian, I think, uh, basically, there's no contradiction between uh, faith and reason. Uh, there can be apparent contradictions and times of conflict, but they go hand in hand. The person who is studying with the gifts that we have in our mind and our brain and our senses as we observe and our logic as we draw conclusions uh, is the same person who also believes. And we hold that uh, God is a creator. He created everything. And he gave us also, he endowed us with the capacity to study. You know, let's talk, you know, science, part of who we are, you know, is science. Don't you think that should be like an Indiana Jones of science to even prove the existence of God? I think this is a, a process of trying to figure out what's going on. Bina means wisdom. And wisdom, you have wisdom in the people, and you have wisdom in creation and in nature, and it's something that we are trying to discover all the time. Of course, that in Bina Secular Yeshiva, there is no conflict to discover and look and, and learn about more and, and to understand. I think this is the key point is that we are, and many we don't know. As much as we ask, we don't know. And this is part of life, part of, I think, optimism and part well, of we discovery. We want something to believe in, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. listen, Rob Cook, I've studied a lot of these Kabbalists. Like, you know, they're saying a lot of things that the Kabbalists have said for thousands of years. They were predicting that science, you know, was one day going to catch up with what they said. Am, am I correct? Very much so. I mean, Rav Cook talks in science scientific language in one of his pieces in his writings. He says, every, what is in every atom and what is every smaller than atom, every subparticle, need called dehu, every subparticle, everything is part of the living unfolding. And, um, but he also gives us a direction. The unfolding is the unfolding of the, of the manifestation of complete good. It, mm -hmm. It's not uh, judgment-free, as it were. It's, right. it's, it's about 
uh, just the way that the physical creation shows how much God loves us, it's so perfect, we have to do everything to, to enhance the good. Right. That's our godliness. So, you know, final, final thoughts. I mean, what, what, you know, where does, what can we do here, you know, locally and around the world to really kind of present this in a way that people are, having, are not having to take one side or another, but having it be cohesive as the way the Creator wanted us to be? I think there's a strong uh, element in Jewish thoughts called tikkun olam. We are fixing the world. There are many ways to fix in the moral side, in the educational side, and also trying to figure out and build things for the good. And this is go together with evolution. I mean, this is part of, of the whole yeah. world uh, motion. I well, can say if that. If you say tikkun, let me just say from Rav Cook, he says, Haratzon le tikkun le shichlul ahavaya poel hu bekoach male meod meod. The will to fix everything, to completely perfect all of existence, is acting very powerfully through all existence. And so the tikkun is what's coming. Rav Cook speaks a lot about metaphors and a lot of the Kabbalists do, you know, things that are meant to be hidden. So what stands out now that we're here able to see his well, words? Well, Cook takes from the whole scientific uh, discovery, so to were, a description of, of evolution. He says that this helps us see that the world is not in a finished state, that the world is in a process of, of, of constant, continuing, becoming, developing. And that brings us, miotli Tachat Hashemesh, where it's always the same, to above the sun, we're in a world of complete newness, and, and that's the Edenic experience, and, and that's what the technological revolution is moving us towards. Father Kelly, Father Kelly, any, any, final, any final words on your part? Well, I'm fascinated watching the evolution of evolution. So it's interesting to see so many scientists um, uh, seeing new aspects that that the original theories didn't cover. So this also is beautiful because you see the human spirit is open to seeing other angles. And I would wish that this would happen all around and maybe we can be a great complement to each other because today each science is very specific in its object that it studies and a biologist won't speak about electricity, that's not his field, and then the tools correspond to the object. So there is a place also for the great sciences of philosophy, of epistemology, how we know what we know, how sure we can be of what we know, how our pursuit of truth, and theology seeks the same. So the integration of these, uh, all these different fields would be to the benefit and this betterment of the world, this tikkun olam that the rabbi has mentioned. So it's a, a great uh, opportunity, I think, today. There's, a, let's say, a softening of the conflict contours, and we're walking a little bit more together. In a, I would say almost using the words of Pope Francis in another field, culture of encounter. We need to encounter each other, listen to each other. We need to respect the observations of nature. We need to understand this. We need to explain it and be responsible with, what we, with all we find for the benefit of everybody, not just for a few so that the least advantage of our world can also benefit from all the great progress in medicine, in knowledge of sicknesses, in resources that are in nature that we can tap for everybody's better life. Thank you very much for joining us, Father Kelly. And uh, thank you both for joining us. Next time, new topic, great discussion. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. Please don't go anywhere. We have a lot more on Holy Land Uncovered.